welcome you guys. My name is Leslie Hunt. Uh, right over here is my coworker. This is Sabrina. And back here is Amanda. She's the branch, branch manager of our Daybreak branch that just opened last summer. And uh, once I use my computer more, it'll stop locking up on me. Okay. So thank you guys for coming. Um, I have been with Mountain America. It'll be, let's see, it'll be 14 years this year that I've been in Mountain America. Um, I have worked in a variety of capacities there. One, that, one department I worked at was our training department, and we worked really closely with our fraud department. And we also we heard a lot of stories from them. They were always letting us know the latest scams that were going on so we could educate our tellers and our loan officers, so therefore they could educate our members. And so we also worked really closely with our fraud department on this presentation, trying to give you guys the most up-to-date scams, the ones that are most prevalent at the moment. Unfortunately, there are so many scams. We're not gonna be able to cover each and every one of them, but we will cover again the ones that are most prevalent right now, especially that our fraud department is seeing. We'll also talk about ways to combat them. Also, if you guys at any time during the presentation have something to share, please feel free, you have a question to ask, no need to save them till the end, ask during the presentation. Again, if you can't hear me or anything, just let me know. Okay, so, this is, we, if this is an updated number, the 36.5 is from 2018, it's not from 2015, so I apologize. But in, 20, in 2018, $36.5 billion was lost to financial abuse of seniors. So is this a lucrative business? Yeah. Absolutely. And because of this, because this number is so high, fraudsters keep coming up with new ways, keep trying to circumvent the protocols that we put in place to keep you guys safe because of this number because they know how much money is in this. And that's why it's so important that we're always, not just seniors, everybody is staying up to date on the current scams because they're always changing and because they're always evolving. Something you may have heard five years ago about to be careful about doing this may have completely changed today just because new technology advances and again our fraudsters get smarter and are doing new things. So of this 7,205 Utah Adult Protective Service investigations, 56% were financial exploitation. So not just verbal or physical, but 56% were financial. Why do you guys think that is? We're too trusting. Trusting, yes, believing. Why else? Tired. <laughs> Tired, right? Uninformed. Uninformed, yes. I think we're targeted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely. Yes. The seniors seniors are, are targeted. Yes, seniors are targeted for sure. So a lot of this is something that very much applies to your demographic. So the first scam we're going to talk about is an SOS scam. Now this story comes directly from one of our members that we obtained permission to use her example. Um, we did recreate it because we wanted you to be able to kind of understand how this works, and I'm sure some of you have even experienced this. Hello. Hi, Grandma, it's your favorite grandson. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, it's Jimmy. It is so good to hear from you, honey. How are you doing, Grandma? I'm good, how are you? I'm kind of in a tight spot right now, and I need your help. Oh my goodness, what has happened? Well, I'm in Spain. Spain? Yeah, and I, I got arrested. Oh my, arrested? Yeah. How in the world did you get arrested in Spain? It's a long story, Grandma, but I don't have a lot of time. They're only letting me have one phone call, and I need your help. If I can't pay the fine, they're going to put me in jail, Grandma. Oh dear. Can you help me? Both of you called your parents? No, Grandma, I haven't. They didn't want me to come in the first place, and I don't want to worry them. Oh, well, what can I do? I need to pay the $2,500 fee, or they're going to send me to jail, Grandma. Jail! Will you help me? Oh, my goodness, of course I'll help you. 
Does that sound familiar to anybody? So we're going to talk about how they how this scam works. Hello. So how it happens. So they call, they said they target an older demographic, and they see who bites. Do you know what he did to see how she, how she would bite? He'd be like, hi, Grandma, it's your favorite grandson. And she and he waited for her to fill in the information. I said, Jimmy, right? So they're seeing who's going to buy. See if you're going to provide them with information. Next, they'll play on what the victim says. So then they'll present the crisis. So they'll be like, I'm in Spain. I'm going to be arrested. I need you to wire twenty five hundred dollars to me immediately, Grandma. And then again, they'll try and encourage you not to get anybody else involved for obvious reason, right? They don't want you to call their parents and be like, oh no, he's right here. <laughs> so some solutions to this one. Do you get others involved? You can trust, right? We're not telling you don't trust anything anyone ever says to you. Trust, but verify. Um, ask more questions. Um, and then be cautious about what personal information you're giving out and what is online. Uh, for example, a target, I mean, a scam was going around where they would, like, grandparents would post information about one of their grandchildren being on an LDS mission. So then fraudsters would get that information and then contact these grandparents and be like, oh, I'm calling from the LDS services and your grandson, which is in the Bolivia mission, is in trouble. We're hoping you can help us out. Would you be able to send us a certain amount of money? So again, like I said, you don't have to not trust anybody, but maybe verify that information. What happened with this member, the one who called her grandson, said, she was in, <coughs> he, said he was in Spain and needed money. She came to Mountain America and she was going to do an international wire transfer. So as she was doing it and our teller was helping her, uh, the member was telling her the story what was happening to her grandson. And the teller was like, can we train our teller's care place? They were like, oh, that sounds a little suspicious. Do you mind if I call my fraud department and just see if we can get a little bit more information about this? Well, first she encouraged her to call the parents. But the grandma said, no, I'd rather not. I just want to get, I want to get him out of trouble as soon as possible. So when she couldn't get her to call the parents, they called the fraud department. Our fraud department looked into it a little further, did discover it was fraud, but the members didn't quite believe it. She wasn't convinced yet. She was like, no, I, I really, I think he's in trouble. I need to get this money to him. So our vice president of our fraud department called the uh, U.S. Embassy in Spain and talked to somebody there, verified it was in fact a scam. They contacted the member, let her know. And so then they convinced her to at least call his parents. So she calls her daughter, and she said, yeah, he's right here, sleep on the couch. Not in space. So again, the solution to this one, trust but verify. And I gave you a, a very specific example. They'll use this for a variety of things. It won't just be like, oh, I'm in jail. It could be any, anything that they would need public to try to get you to send money. Next is tech support scams. <laughs> Rumbling. <Okay. laughs> Hello. Good afternoon. This is Susie Crandall from Windows Technical Support. My badge ID is A four five three F two. How are you today? I'm fine. <laughs> Great, so we've detected your computer missed a critical update and has made your computer vulnerable to cyber attacks. Oh no, what do I need to do? Well, there's good news, I can fix it for you right now. Are you at your computer? No, but I can be, just a moment. All right, I'm at my computer, what do I need to do? Is your computer on? Yes. Great, so I'm going to send you a link to your email. What's your email address? It is M. Goodman at mail.com. Okay, so I've sent the email. Can you let me know when you get it? Okay, I got it. All right, so click on the link. Okay. 
So you should see a place to enter your name and your email address. Yeah, I see that. Okay, good. Go ahead and enter that in for me and then click join meeting. Okay, I did that. Great, I can see you there now. So now I need you to share your screen with me. All right, uh, I'll be able to see what you're doing. Yep, you sure will. Okay, Mark, so do you see the button that says share screen? Yes. Yep. Can you click on it for me? Okay, I clicked on that. Great. Now I need you to hover over the blue bar at the top of the screen that says you are sharing this monitor. Do you see the word assign? Yes. All right, so click on that and then select pass keyboard and mouse control, then click on my name. I did that, and a box popped up that asks if I want to grant control. Good, so that means it's working. Click on grant control for me. All right. All right, I'm going to take control of your screen now and so that I can make the updates to your computer. The great part is that during this presentation, we hear the response from the audience, right? You guys know this is trouble, right? That's good. This is that's that's what we that's the response we want in here. The thing is though, this one's easy to get people to bite because they call and they're like, Hey, hey, are you having problems with your computer? That everybody's having problems with their computer, right? <laughs> yes. Sometimes they'll say something like, Well, as soon as we detect a problem with your computer, it sends Microsoft a notice. And so we have this new customer service thing in place that we'll contact you as soon as this happens so we can help you immediately. And I thought, oh, well, that sounds wonderful. I can hear the phone call that popped up on my computer because I had to do something about it. And it was from Microsoft saying, tell us about the problem. So I learned my best in the market. Oh, which is. Yeah, so it'll come up. So that is, yeah. So that's spyware that's um, on your computer, right? That's a virus or something that somebody will put on your computer or if you click, unfortunately, on a wrong link, then they can download it on your computer. They don't even have to call you necessarily and get your permission to do it. They can do it other ways as well. So with this, did you have Well, I <clears throat> on the microphone. Um, I did that just the other day. Um, I didn't do it this way. I called them. Uh, I call that the support. And that's know. fine. Yeah. Is that a problem nope. at all? Mm -hmm. or is that you call that? That, so, yes. That's the solution. That is the right thing. So if you do get a call like this, someone saying, hey, we're here to help you, be like, great, thank you for contacting me. I'm just gonna I'm gonna hang up and I'm gonna call back from a known number. So you probably went to Apple's website and you found the number that was listed on their verified website. Also, a, no, a way to know if a website is secure, if it's a legitimate website, is at the top it will say HTTPS, semicolon, backslash. That's right. Not backslash, backslash. <laughs> and that's how you know it's a secure website. So I'm sure you went to Apple's website, you called the number, then you were able to find, you were contacted them, you were able to speak with them. That is the solution to this. So if anytime you ever get somebody, first of all, unfortunately, wouldn't it be great if like Microsoft or your computer really could detect immediately when there was a problem and somebody instantly called you. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. So you do want to call them back on a no number. So how they do this, right? They call posing as a technician and then they install the spyware. Like you said, this can also be done in other ways, right? Unfortunately, you might click a wrong leak, something pops up on your computer. It's like, you need to install this immediately because someone's about to attack your computer. But really, they, which is true, right? They are about to attack you. <laughs> so be careful. Then information, right? So once they have access to your computer, so in this example, uh, and that customer service customer service agent, she sounded so nice. Didn't she sound so nice? They will. They'll sound so nice. They're not. They're going to try to sound as unconspicuous or unsuspicious as possible. So then they're gonna have all that information on your computer. Um, do you guys ever save stuff on your computer? Like you'll save your login information to your bank, like something, it's a, it's a tool that's on your computer, right? That you can save your login information, your username and your password. Uh, some people encourage you not to do that, uh, to not have it saved just in case of instances like this. That's something that you can decide for yourself. Okay, 
He talks about calling back on a known number. So the next is family fraud. This one is unfortunate. But again, one of the most prevalent scams that there are, especially among seniors. So this is another true story, and I've actually heard this story in, sem in several forms. Uh, we do an estate planning presentation, and at the end of our estate planning presentations, I have so many people come up to me and share pretty much this same story. So this man, his name is Daryl. He was um, near end of life. He was not. He wasn't speaking. He was didn't have a lot of strength. So his oldest son uh, got a quick um, quick change deed uh, request. And had a notary come with him, had his, took his dad's hand and had him sign it over. So they deeded his house over to his son. Um, a, an assistant was to the, um, the healthcare assistant was in the room. She could see it. Didn't, she didn't report it immediately, right? But then the notary signed it. So then when Daryl did pass away, his home went to his oldest son and was not divided among the rest of his children. Like I said, I unfortunately have heard this story in several forms, uh, but we're going to talk about some solutions to this one. Well, moral of this story, right? If what would have been great about this story is that the medical assistant who would have who was in the room would have immediately reported it. Uh, sometimes people feel like, oh, you know, this isn't. I don't want to get involved. This isn't any of my business. The thing about it is, you really don't have to get involved. If you see something is happening, you can report it to the Department of Aging and Adult Services, even anonymously, and you don't necessarily have to even be involved, okay? If you see something, you should report it. So how it happens, so deeding their home, or like we talked about him like signing over, joint bank accounts, um, someone isn't necessarily, even if you're not um, in poor health or you're still able to make decisions, Sometimes they'll have family members that will convince them it's a great idea to do a joint bank account. Because they'll be like, oh, you know what? You're always writing checks and I'm taking them around. Wouldn't it just be so much easier if I just if we were just joint on it and I could do everything? Now, again, we're not saying don't trust anybody, but we're just telling you some of the scams that are quite prevalent right now that they will do so that the family member convinces the person, okay, you can be joint on my account. But what happens when somebody's joint on an account? How much control do they have? Oh. They have just as much control as the primary. Some people think, oh, I'm the primary on the account, so I'll be able to override anything that the joint may want to do because I'm the primary. That's not true. Uh, the joint account, they have just as much control, just as much privilege as the primary on the account, the joint does. Yes? Can you set up the not with joint, because when a joint account, it's basically saying uh, we have joint control of the account. Yeah, so there's not really a way to say, like, stipulate an account that anytime the joint does something, they have to get a primary signature. No, there's not. Oh, but you know what? I will tell you a good tool. So I kind of worry about that. We have a product in North America called a My Express debit card. What this is, it's like a lot of times parents will use these or employees will use, employers will use these. So I'll use an example of a parent. So they have a teenager, uh, they want to give them gas money or maybe like money for lunch or something, but they don't want them to have access or control or any access to their account. So they'll get them a My Express debit card and they'll be able to preload money onto it. So maybe they transfer $50 a week to this debit card. It comes from the checking account, it loads onto this debit card. And they give it to their teenager. Their teenager is able to use it for gas. They're able to use it for lunch. Um, and the parent, when they log in online, they can see everything, all the transactions on that My Express debit card. They can see where their child is spending that money. Also, let's say that kid brings in that My Express debit card and it goes into the branch and says, I'd like to transfer more money onto this. A My Express debit card does not give them any access to the main account. So sometimes employers will use this for their employees to give them gas money or for whatever reason they want to. But yet again, they're protecting their account because they don't have direct access to it. Also another great thing about it is that, let's say your teenager isn't very responsible, heaven forbid, right, teenagers not being responsible. But they run it into the, they use all the money and they keep trying to use it. The great thing about a My Express debit card 
is it stops working once there's no money in it. There's no overdraft fees, which can rack up quickly, right? So this is a response. This is what you can protect your account kind of in a similar way. Um, next is a uh, general financial power of a chain. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I had a friend several years ago who suspected that her father was being scammed by some guy that you know, kept giving money from him. And she tried to call him and her father said, well, you know, I don't So if you suspected like that and you wanted to go ahead and see your parents' bank account, if you weren't on it, legally the bank should not allow you to have any access to the account. So there's really not a way. I mean, if she did, maybe she probably shouldn't have, but maybe did find a way, maybe somebody kind of broke the rules. But no. Well, I have a question. Um, I have my daughter on my bank account just so that you know, if I pass away, then she's got access to that. Mm -hmm. That's our agreement. Um, how do you do that if you don't trust the kid? <laughs> or, or, um, right. So it's one thing if you trust them, right? We're saying it's fine to trust people, but if you ever feel on the fence or maybe don't, I say if you don't trust your kids, I would strongly suggest you not give them joint and, access. Uh, what happens with your bank account once you pass away? Then you can list them as a beneficiary. So if you listed uh, your kids as a beneficiary on your account when you pass away, it would it would go to them. So they wouldn't have any control over it. Also, the account wouldn't stay open. The money would just be given to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Exactly. Or if you don't have a trust or a will, it goes into probate. Well, and then, but if they need the money to you know take care of things, then, then yeah, they're going to have a trust set up. Yeah, for that. Well, you I have, have a trust. trust. Yeah, you have a trust, and you're going to go. Yeah. Well, I would highly recommend a trust. If you're not going to, I mean, you said you, if you trust your kids, I'm not saying don't add them on joy. I'm just letting you know some of the most prevalent scams and ways that people are taking advantage of. But yes, trusts are a good way, beneficiaries are a good way to make sure that money does pass from you to your children pretty seamlessly. Oh, yeah. So if you have a trust, is there any benefit? Can't hear her. Oh, so her question was, if you have a trust, is there any other additional benefit to adding them as a beneficiary? No, to having them as a joint account. Oh, having them as a joint account? No. So no, trust works, a joint, a trust works pretty similar, yeah. The advantage for a child on your account, and this comes from the other side of the world, is if you are unable to sign your own check, they are able to be transferred. Yes, that's the thing. Yes. That's, that's the one benefit we have with the signatures, is that they can actually access money in your account. Yes, but a trust does work pretty similar. But you can also set up a, a power of attorney for that type of situation, but if you were incapacitated, they have limited power of attorney to access your funds. Yes, that's true. You can also have two different power of attorneys. You can have a medical power of attorney, and then you could also have a financial power of attorney, and they could be uh, they could be two different people. Yeah. Well, the other advantage of having a checking account with us, someone like that is my daughter, like Rhonda does on mine. If I were to be killed suddenly and my husband were not living, and there was a need for immediate cash flow mm -hmm. for kids and grandkids to get to a funeral or medical things or a coffee or burial things, even though I have a, I have my key for the funeral. There are some tremendous advantages to having a budget on that account with you for that reason. Mm -hmm. It's an yeah. accessibility. True. Okay. Okay. If you do have a trust, but sometimes you have a trust the trust doesn't work that fast, is yeah. what I'm saying. Um, but if they're a trustee yeah. on the account, so yeah. you can have a successor trustee. So if you have your trust and you're the trustee, so you're the person who's controlling it, you can set up a successor That's trustee. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and the event that you pass away, then they would. That um, immediate control. immediate so that's true. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so a trust would be the most efficient. Yes, and probably the most secure. Okay. Hey. Um. Also, there are just on the 
topic of power of attorneys. There are power of attorneys that they only go in in effect in the event that something happens. So you can set up a power of attorney that says, in the event that I am medically incapacitated, then this child becomes my financial power of attorney and this child becomes my medical power of attorney. So they don't just, I mean, there are some power of attorneys that at the moment you sign it, it goes into control. And then there are other ones that only do in the event that something happens. Okay, okay so we've got some resources for you because sometimes, oh, I'll also talk about a couple other steps. I'm sure none of you have gotten those phone calls, right? Or those robocalls of people being like, the IRS is trying to contact you, or your extended warranty is about to expire. Yeah. Yes. Social you, security. Yes, social security, all of these things, right? General collective moan. Okay. Hopefully most people know we don't spend a lot of time on that one. This is people generally know they're becoming more familiar with these scams. Uh, Again, they're trying to see who bites as well, right? They figure that oh, this is the IRS. You know, you need to contact us immediately. Press number two, and we'll get you to somebody. They'll do the same type of thing. They'll try to collect information off of you. They'll ask you when you filed your last tax return. Do you know how much your tax return was? How much you received or had to pay? They'll try to get all that information from you. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, again, the best way for any of those robocalls or anything like that is to contact them back on a known number. So, phone numbers, if you're getting that one scam where you talked about fixing your computer, they'll give you an 833 number. That number, that is not a real phone number. Oh, I didn't know that, so that's good. So, 833 number? Yeah, just generally don't, yeah, try to find a, a verified number. So, we're going to talk about some other things that you guys can use that will help you with any type of scam. So, kind of went over the three most popular scams significantly more popular scams. But then we're gonna talk about some ways to safeguard you from any type of scam. So, um, in Mountain America, I'm gonna tell you kind of about our products, but uh, lots of institutions offer very similar products. Did you have a question? Yes, before you go on, there's another scam I'm kind of worried about, and I don't know whether it's real, whether you should worry about it, but it's your home title, you can lose your home title, is that really what? No, that's a scam, yeah. No. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it can happen, right? That if you are, if you have a lien on your home and you default on something, right, you can lose your home that way. But if someone's calling you and saying, you know, they're advertising on suspected property details. Okay. That, um, that anybody can go on the internet and find out, you know, your mail, have access to your title, see what it is, and then they'll forge a document and you'll lose your. And then those people will then borrow money and you will lose your home because you can't, you don't want to pay or you can't pay, you know. I have all that scam. Yes, that is a scam. So, yes, so they are. Is it a problem? Do you need to do anything? They're selling this insurance. Right. To, uh, yeah. Protect you on this. I just wonder. We'll talk, yeah. So, we'll talk about some kind of. I'm not sure about their products and before advertising. Um, there are products that can protect you. We'll go over some of them, uh, but I don't know the exact company that does it. They're legitimate, but that is a legitimate scam. Yes. Probably every other week on my computer, I get a scam from Microsoft or someone that looks just like Microsoft, has their logo, their symbols, and it says enter your password, your, your email and password. But if you look at the email address, it's wrong. It doesn't even have MSN in there. So you just want to delete it and get rid of it. But you can look, pay close attention to that email address and it's usually... It's just yes, so Mountain America's even had this where uh, fraudsters will send out an email to our members and be like, oh, there's a problem with your account. Click on this link and it clicks on it and it looks similar to Mountain America's logout page and they want you to input your username and your password to get into your bank account. Mm -hmm. But if you, the initial email they sent you, if you hover over it, it will not say www.matthew.com. It will say it's completely different. Even though in the link it says mountainamerica.com, when you hover over it, it'll say something completely different. And then it'll take you to an unsecure website that doesn't say that HTTPS at the top. Yes, okay. yes. I was going to say, if there's anybody wearing the thing, um, officially you will get it saying an email 
from the financial institution, right? And one way we can determine if it's um, an actual email or not, instead of responding to email, email, instead of responding to your bank's email, go, if, if you set up online banking, go to the online bank site, because almost all banks then have somewhere at the top a column or an icon that has like a little e email or an envelope or something like that. And they will not just email you, they'll put all their communications there. So you just log on to, let's say you don't like not from the market, but let's say you met with Chase. You log on to Chase, you go and see if they've actually sent you the communication. Usually they do it in both spots. And then you know it's real. Any other questions about that? Okay. All right, so let's talk about now some products or some services that you can use that help um, keep you safe. So like I said, I'm going to tell you about some of Mountain Americas because that's where I work and they're the products that I know. But you can contact your financial institution and ask if they have similar products, which I'm sure they do. So uh, Mountain Americas, we have one called IV Protect, which this one will do. Um, it will send you, so it's got a secure online vault. It's got a one-time black market scan. Man, did you know that is? Um, yes, yeah, so this thing looks to see your social security. It looks to see your social security number, your email address, any personal information that's currently being used on the black market. And the black market is um, where all the bad guys go to buy your information, basically. <laughs> black market. Yeah. Can you talk to my tongue about some of the products that I, I'm not in the branch as much, so I don't. some sort of identity theft protection they can provide to you. And there's some different levels of that. There's going to be a basic plan and a more premium plan. A basic plan is going to usually just do a one-time screening um, of the black market, for example. And then they will monitor your three different credit reports and send you a notification via email um, if there has been a change made to your credit report. Um, a more advanced plan is going to continuously monitor your uh, the, the black market for your information because just because it didn't come up that one time doesn't mean it might not come up six months from now. Um, and so, for example, um, I use our premium ID Protect, and I have gotten multiple emails that, for example, my email address and personal email address is on the black market. Not really that concerned. That's kind of public information. Is that I think your email address. I've gotten alerts in my social security number was on the black market. That would be something probably different. So a more premium plan is going to offer that. Um, and then in terms of the three credit bureaus, any um, identity, identity theft protection is going to monthly send you a notification of either there's been no changes on your credit report or you know the notice has changed. Um, did you in fact make it? A common example of a change is perhaps you had a credit line increase on your, your Visa credit card, say. And you know you did that, so no problem, you just move on. Um, however, if you didn't request that, then that might be um, a clue to contact your financial institution and find out what is going on there. Any questions on that? And generally speaking, those plans are going to cost anywhere between $3 to $15 a month. Not in America, are $3 to $10 a month. Um, if you're paying more than that, then maybe just look around and see if there isn't something that might be a little bit more suitable for a less of a cost. So yeah, so signing up for one of these products, whether it's through your financial institution or maybe do some research and do a different one, they're going to do a lot, they're going to take a lot of the work out of it for you. They're going to be able to monitor your credit, they're going to be able to monitor your information so that maybe you don't always feel paranoid or like, oh, you know, if something's coming up, you know you're protected, you know somebody else is always keeping an eye on it. Okay, here's some information for reporting elder abuse. So it says the Utah law states that any person who has reason to believe that any vulnerable adult has been the subject of abuse, neglect, or exploitation shall immediately notify Adult Protective Services intake or the nearest law enforcement agency. And this is something that when we talk to our fraud department about, or like I said, I do the um, estate planning <coughs> presentations, I'm always alarmed by how many people witness something but didn't say something immediately, or they kind of saw something and they're like, oh, didn't sit well with them, and they were like, okay, you know, it's not really any of my business. But 
But again, you do not have to get involved, but it's important maybe that you say something, you notify. Also, it's good to create a paper trail if something is happening. So here's the hotline and here's the online website if you do see something like that. Does anyone need any more time to see people write it down? Oh, and it's on your handout. Okay. okay, so as you leave here today, these are some of the things that we want you to do. I want you to ask your senior family and friends if they've received any suspicious phone calls or any emails. Just help other people be educated as well. Uh, sometimes when people will talk, you know, my grandma will talk and she'll tell me things that someone contacted them, she's on the phone with them for an hour and almost gave them her information. And I, she's an incredibly intelligent woman. But these people, again, are, they're smart. It's a lucrative business. They know what they're doing. It's like playing a game against somebody who's had the opponent knows all the rules, knows all the strategies, knows all the tips, and you know nothing, or very little. So, again, if it happens, you know, like I said, uh, the example I'm giving it, my grandma, she's on the phone with him for an hour, and literally almost nearly gave them all of her information because they were so um, convincing. Uh, next one, make, oh, should I your question? Well, I was scammed, and mine was, answer this survey, you're on, you're on your computer, and they ask you to answer a survey. At the end of the survey, there's a prize. Something always is just one or not available, and I went for this one on skin product. Oh, it's only $4.95 plus a dollar shipping. And so when you click on it, you have to give them a debit card, your address, and that. Well, you get the product all right, but you get nothing else in writing. But next month, here arrives a product. The cost is $99. Plus, they send another one that's $69, another different type of product. And you wonder, you go to the post office, well, it was unsolicited. I didn't send for this, you know, so you don't have to send it back. But that can go on, and if you don't look, you're on vacation, you don't look at your bank statement, you see all of a sudden, three months, you know, 99, 69, it can add up fast. So I went to my bank, told them what was happening, and they got the money back. And I tried to send the product back, it was to go to Harriman. No, it's in California someplace. So you couldn't even send the product back. So really watch on that. Don't answer surveys. Don't fall for the $3.99, the $4.99, whatever. Yes, that's very good. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And if you're ordering a product from a company you're not sure about, use a third-party payer like PayPal. That way the company does not have your credit card in there. Oh, that's good. Also, but is there's those. We're seniors, and so, you know, they ask. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Also, we talked about my Express debit cards. Cards, um, I never buy anything online with my actual credit card or my debit card. All of my online purchases are done with those my Express debit cards because they can't run them into the negative. Once the money's gone, it's gone. And a lot of times, I'll only transfer enough money into that debit card for the online purchase. Oh, that's so. Even idea. if they steal that card information, it's not going to do them a lot of good. My son works at Fidelity in the job department, and it's mainly for those uh, elderly people that are being targeted. <clears throat> Just in Utah, in his department, they have three units with about 10 people in each unit taking care of calls for fraud. So it's really there. It's something you really need to watch closely. Absolutely. Our Mountain America's fraud department uh, has been one of our, well, I don't, I don't know if it's currently the fastest growing department, but for a while there it was. Okay. So, and then our last one here, um, you can visit that www.daas.utah.gov. Uh, that's the Department of Adult Aging Services. There we go. Thank you. To learn more about common scams, and then you can also call that number if you want to report any scams. And maybe you haven't heard about, or even if you have, so you can even call this number if you have questions about whether something is a scam or not. So you can call to report it here. Also, if you 
they kind of you're not sure that it could be legitimate, it could not be legitimate, you can call this number. They have a lot of that information that can help you either figure it out or tell you whether it is or it isn't. Yes? Um, uh, you skip the one, uh, make sure the antivirus and operating system on your computer is up to date. How do you check that? So that'll say on your computer, um, you'll usually get a notification when you log on that it'll tell you if it's out of date. So like if you have McAfee or something on there that you've installed, um, it's usually that you can usually purchase it or you can install it for a certain amount of months or years. Um, when it's out of date, they usually will send you, so every time you log on, there'll be a little notification that says it's out of date or it needs to be updated. And a lot of times people think, oh, it's not that important, or I'll just be careful. I know what all the smart things are. I mean, I know a lot about fraud, I know a lot about scams, and I still make sure that that's updated on my computer, because again, you don't need that. I'm always so impressed by these fraudsters and the things they can do and the things they accomplish and the incredibly intelligent people that they con. And so I never honestly think I'm smarter than them. So I always keep that updated on my computer. Any other questions? Well, there's something that might help everyone. There is a free service you can have for two weeks, malware bite, and will clean your computer right up of anything that might be on there that black market related. I don't know. I don't know about. I haven't heard you don't have to subscribe to the service after your two, three weeks are up. Works great. Can't hear. So your question is. Is it safe to leave your credit card information stored on your computer? No, like if you're purchasing something, you call and order it, and you just have your personal credit card number. Is that more secure than necessarily doing it online? Um, it can be. So if you're calling, because sometimes it's hard to verify those websites. Um, if you're calling a known number, if it's a known, well-known company, it can be more secure um, than a website you might not know. But if it is a secure website, like I said, it has that HTTPS at the top, then I would say it's just as secure. Do you have something to add? Oh, I was going to say about the um, virus protection, just be careful if you get a pop up from one that it is one that you've installed or paid for. Or if you have a new computer, a lot of times it'll come with your own antivirus or McAfee. Make sure it's something that either you ordered because that's another scam and the way they can get into your computer. Yeah. Well, if you have Windows, my granddaughter told me, Windows has a built-in protection. So if you have Windows on your computer, check it out. Windows Defender. Huh? Windows Defender. Yeah. yeah. And so these are all great products. Uh, sure. Just make sure that you are purchasing them from verified websites is probably the most important takeaway. Okay. All right. Okay. I think changing our... Um, Passwords, especially for our financial institutions, often. Yeah, and most financial institutions will require you to change your password every so often. Um, but yes, making sure that those are updated. Also, making sure this also goes along with family fraud. Uh, not having your uh, passwords like posted right on your computer. Uh, a lot of people do that because there's a lot of different passwords, right? It can be hard to remember. Um, we would just, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a family member, right? Anybody that visits your home, they could just take a real quick picture, right, of that, of that, have that password, and then they don't, it doesn't have to be at your computer, right? They can go home and access that information somewhere else. So just, if you're going to keep it, make sure you keep it somewhere secure. Also, we have a son-in-law who works for Red Hat, and he does a lot of management of this kind of stuff. And there are programs that you can get that are called password managing programs. And they keep all of your data, but they keep it safe. And you have to have two factor or more authentication to get into it. So no one can get into it but you. Yes, thank you. Hey, any other questions, comments? You guys were fantastic. Thank you guys so much for coming. One more. Oh, yes. Um, and you should all have a little survey that you guys got today. Um, if you wouldn't mind filling that out, we'd appreciate it. Um, and then if you have any other questions afterwards, if you have something maybe you didn't want to share with the group a question, uh, Sabrina, myself, and Amanda are absolutely happy. We'll stay after. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming.